Hello and welcome to the third part of the HTML forms tutorial. Last time we looked at creating these radio buttons and checkboxes. We also added in this new text box here. Now there is another input type that I would like to throw into this mix and that is the select box. Now a select box isn't actually an input in the same sense as a text uh, field. It is itself its own element. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how we construct the select element. So the first thing we need to do is actually create the select element. And because it's not an input, it actually has its own um, element node itself. So it's select. And we're going to just put in um, an end tag here. Now notice that the inputs here, they had their end tags. They were self-closing. Whereas with the select buttons that will select inputs, they're not reason uh, why they're not self-closing is because we can actually supply the options within the select tag itself. So option itself is an element. So we do option um, and we're going to do small. We're going to have another option here and we're going to call that um, medium. Medium. And we're going to have another option and we're going to have large like so. We're going to save that refresh this page and we can see that we have an option here um, uh, select box small medium and large so the next thing I'm going to do is actually supply some attributes to this select option let's uh, take for example the label let's copy that put that into here we're gonna have uh, shirt size and we're gonna do four shirt size and again this is going to go red because we haven't got the attribute the ID attribute here so we're going to do ID is equal to um, shirt size which now goes green and we're also going to do a name of shirt size it's it can be different but I'm just going to keep it consistent so shirt size um, and uh, yeah I'm going to just go back to here refresh nothing really is going to change apart from the fact that we have a label but I don't know if you were quick enough to see that there was actually another um, set of options that we could have called opt groups. So this basically allows us to group the options together. So let's try that now. Let's go back here. Um, so instead of option, we're going to have an opt group. So the opt group actually has a label itself. So I'm going to add that in now. So I'm going to have short. Whoops. And I'm going to close that off. Now notice that we have uh, an end tag for the opt group. So I'm going to copy that, put that into here, save this, refresh the page, and see, what's ha see what ha has happened. Okay, so notice that this has just suddenly moved slightly. And if we were to uh, open this out, we can actually see that we have a label for short, so small, medium, large in short. Now, what we can do with this is have another opt group like so, put that into here, and we can do um, long, so like a long short, uh, a long shirt or a short shirt. So save that, refresh this, and come into here. Now we have these opt groups, so long and short. This is very helpful if, for example, you uh, have a a select box of countries and it's it's aware of which country you're currently in or it's aware of the previous selection that you had so it would put in sort of your most used options at the top so for example if this was a list of countries let's just change that to be uh, countries I should have done this beforehand so countries and I'm just going to change that to countries If I can spell it, country e with uh, countries. There we go. Uh, copy that over to here, and copy that too. If this is uh, known, and this is unknown, or if this was uh, previous, previously uh, selected, right? And this is uh, not, so we're just going to leave it like that. If that was the UK, and maybe that was German, Germany, 
and let's remove you. Let's put in here, let's do, um, I don't know, USA, and let's do Africa. So perhaps if that was, instead of um, previously selected, we could do previously visited or something. Let's save that, refresh the page. Now we've got previously selected and then we don't have anything under here. What we could do, however, is just do a dash, 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 like that, save that, refresh, and now we have uh, a dash, dash here. So previously selected is UK and Germany, and then other would be USA and Africa. So for example, if, uh, if this was some sort of form that was aware of other selections that you possibly had created down the road, maybe if this was you filled out another form or so forth, and it was intelligent enough to work out what other options you supplied beforehand, then maybe this is a way of indicating what options the user might want to choose. So that's a very good way of having some good user experience. So the select box is actually quite advanced. We can actually do a lot of things with this. At the moment here, it's only got one selection, but we can actually have multiple selections. Uh, so for example, if you were to hold down uh, sh the shift key or the control key, I can't remember which one it is right now, but you can actually create, you can actually add multiple selections to this. At the moment, it's only one. So you click on one and then it disappears and so forth. But you can actually expand this. Let's do that now. Let's go back to um, the code. And what we need to do is add an attribute called multiple and we do multiple like that. Now notice that we don't, this IDE here isn't saying that there's an equal sign or anything. So remember back with the checkboxes where it's just checked, we can just have multiple. Save that, refresh the page. Whoops. Um, and now we have multiple and we can scroll down. So previously selected UK, Germany, USA and Africa and I can click on multiple ones like that. So when I go and submit it, then I'm submitting a multiple answers. Um, if we were to remove the option group, then we would remove these bits and pieces. Let's do that now. So if we were to remove the option group from that one and that one and this, and also that bit, save that, refresh the page, then we just have this selection like so. And again, we can select multiple options if needed. So what we've got so far is a checkbox, two checkboxes, and they're either ticked or unticked. We have a, a radio uh, button that you can only choose one option, so blue, green, or brown. And we have a select box here, which we can select multiple items off of it. So I'm going to leave it there. If you found this video helpful, if you found this tutorial useful, then please do give it a thumbs up. Do share it around to others that may find it helpful as well. Do subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. I do a web chat and a tutorial every week. But thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, and I shall see you again in the next tutorial. Thank you. Bye.